Guys, TJ Dillashaw, Corey Sanhagen's coming up. Really excited for this fight. You know, these guys were scheduled to fight. TJ got a cut over his eye, so they had to reschedule it. But uh, this is an awesome fight. I mean, we all know they trained in the past when Sanhagen was coming up before he was in the UFC. Dillashaw had a lot of good things to say about him and his skills. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, these guys know each other and, and, and they know who's better because they trained in the past. And, you know, I'm going to say, like, honestly, I don't find those training sessions that significant. You know, how many years ago was this? How... How much improvements did both of these fighters make over that time, you know? Especially Sanhagen, who has found, you know, extreme confidence now. You know, TJ's been out for two years. There's a lot of other factors that I pay more attention to than the fact that they trained together years and years ago. And maybe they know who got the better or who during that time. But doesn't significantly translate to today, you know? We don't know... If, you know, Sanhagen's a completely different fighter from that time and if Dillashaw maybe isn't the same fighter from two years ago who was, you know, using EPO whatever with the with the Henry Cejudo fight, weight cut to 125. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of rumors that TJ was on some stuff before that. Now, they did go back and test, you know, some of his other samples, but I don't know how significant that is as well as far as catching things from the past. Uh, but stylistically this fight is amazing i mean sanhagen's been amazing with his movement his striking he's tall lengthy for the weight class and you know he's knocking guys out now he has a newfound mentality where he's just a killer in there and you know he says he's watching you know uh uh war uh movies and and listening to crazy he you know hardcore music and different ways to kind of get himself into a, a savage mentality which you know is a big difference maker. You know, you're going in there to hurt somebody that's trying to hurt you. And you can't always go in there as the normal person that you are on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, just, yeah, whatever, another fight, all good. Let's stay calm. That's cool and all, but like, you got to find what's best for you. And for Sanhagen, you know, he seems to have found, he seems to have found what's best for him, which is that killer mindset, war, you know, uh, I'm going in to, to, to either kill you or be killed. And look what he's done, you know, since the Al Jermaine fight. You know, he, he knocked out Frankie Edgar. He, he knocked out, you know, Marlon Marais. Two huge knockouts right there to show that he hit a switch and that he's a different fighter. And I think, you know, a lot of that had to do with that Aljo loss. You know, he got embarrassed, he said. He, you know, he, he didn't even get to perform. He just got his back taken, got put out, and that was that. Uh, you know, that's not really a good telltale of whether he has wrestling or whether his jujitsu is lacking because Aljo, you know, latched onto his back instantly, choked him out. Aljo's a high level black belt and that's his move. You know, taking your back is his thing. And once he's on your back, you ain't getting him off. So, you know, you can't really go off that fight either to see whether or not uh, Sanhagen can deal with Dillashaw's wrestling and jujitsu uh, scrambles. Uh, I do lean towards uh, TJ having the edge in those areas. I do think that his ability to mix things up as far as striking to takedowns to jujitsu is, is a higher level than, than Sanhagen. But I, I also think that Sanhagen has uh, different advantages with length and reach and, and a little bit more intelligence on the feet as far as uh, striking goes. But I'm really excited for this fight just solely based off of the fact of like what TJ will we see? Will we see the same TJ? Will we see a better TJ? Will we see a diminished TJ from, you know, being out for two years? Uh, I think personally the guy is a co crazy competitive person. His ego is definitely up there. He does not want to lose and I think he has a chip on his shoulder. You know, like a lot of people talking shit like, hey... You were doing EPO and that's why you were the champion and, and you were on some shit and that's why you had that title reign and, and this and that. So I think for TJ, he's like, listen, if you think that's the case, this is my chance to erase all of that. This is my chance to say, hey, I've come clean. I made a mistake. I did that EPO. Now I'm clean. They're testing me. But look, I'm going to come back and I'm going to reign supreme clean. You know what I mean? So if he comes out and he, he runs through Sanhagen or finishes him or beats him convincingly, that's a huge statement, especially, you know, after two years out, you know, being tested left and right now, you know, trying to make sure he's doing everything right. Like, 
you can't really say anything after that. Like that's that's him kind of erasing everything about that. And so I think he's motivated to do that. But I also think Sanhagen is got to get the boom and chino. Take a little quick sip, you know. Don't judge. Excuse me. Uh, I think Sanhagen also has a chip on his shoulder thinking, maybe you got the best of me in training those days, but you don't know who I am now. You know, like you're about to find out who I am now. And I think that's one of his motivators. And I think uh, obviously knowing TJ never lost his belt, which should be, you know, something he mentions over and over leading up to this fight for promotion. He's never lost his belt, you know, by actually losing a fight. And so Sanhagen beating him is like, hey, like this is the first time someone actually stole a, a win from TJ. You know, he didn't actually lose his belt. So I'm the champion now, really. And, and you know, I'm sure he wants that rematch with Aljo or whoever's going to win that fight between Aljo and Peter Yan. You know, this these guys are the talks to get the next title fight. So this fight's huge. And, and uh, I just think there's a lot of mystique to this fight. I mean, TJ training with uh, Bang Ludwig, you know, They've had such a good dynamic, you know, uh, coming up and getting the title and stuff like that. And they've worked on their striking. And, and, and you know, TJ shown a new school type of a striking where he switches stances and does a lot of switch hooks to kicks. And, uh, you know, mixes that style up into his wrestling really, really well. And, you know, uh, Sanhagen ha has showed that he's able to, you know, endure power punches from a guy like Lineker and kind of out-technique guys. Uh, his jiu-jitsu is good, uh, but I just don't know if he has that wrestling to jiu-jitsu transitioning at the level of a guy like TJ. Uh, that's where I see the difference maker in this fight. I think the fight, if it, if, if it ends earlier, you know, it's because TJ got him down. And was able to control him and, and, and land some, some ground and pound and, and maybe latch onto a submission. Uh, but if the fight goes longer, you know, and Sanhagen's able to keep it up on the feet, I think that can cause issues for TJ as well. But really, I'm interested to see if, like, I'm really interested to see how the striking differential looks, you know? Like, like TJ was always really well-rounded, but his striking was looking amazing. You know, he was knocking guys out. Like Cody Garbrandt, and he knocked out Burrell a while ago. And, and uh, you know, he was finishing guys on the feet most of the time. So it's like... Where does he want this fight to take place? Does he look at the Aljamain fight? Does he say, hey, I want to try to, you know, like pretend I'm going to strike with you, but take you down and kind of try to get your back and, and, and catch a submission? Or or is he all in on the striking? And he's like, listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried about uh, Sanhagen striking. Like I'm levels above him on the feet. Like look what I've done. So I'm interested to see where TJ's game plan is at, what they're thinking on their side. Uh, you know, and I think Sanhagen is going to come out really aggressive, you know, knowing he's been out for two years, knowing that they used to spar and maybe TJ got the best of him. I think Sanhagen is going to want to get out up on the front foot, get TJ backing up, be fast paced, put a high pressure on him and, and, and high volume and try to show him like show him who's boss right off the get go. I think that's really important for Sanhagen to do, especially if the truth is that Dillashaw was getting the better of him in the sparring and this and that. So we'll see what happens, man. I'm going to be honest. I can't really I can't really apply the fact that TJ's been out for two years on my pick. I'm just going to kind of erase that and just say skills versus skills. <clears throat> I lean towards TJ. I just think more well-rounded, better at mixing things up as far as the mixed martial arts game goes. You know, striking into takedowns. Wrestling takedowns into jujitsu transitions, jujitsu transitions into ground and pound transitions, stuff like that. I think TJ is a black belt at all of that. I think he's a he's a firefight. Like I think his his mentality is is very fast paced, very aggressive, very intense. I just think that's hard to deal with, and I think San Higgins gonna have to kind of land something early to stop TJ from getting momentum, or <clears throat> TJ is gonna kind of take over with with mixing things up really well and getting some takedowns and making Corey work and landing some ground and pound, maybe catching on a submission. So I'm leaning TJ right now. I'm going to go with TJ Dillashaw to win the fight. And I think it's going to be by TKO stoppage. Boom, baby.